In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. I'm sure everybody now is aware of the attacks which happened in Paris and uh, where a team of uh, three teams of various people went and, and killed over, I believe it's at 1.30, it may be above that, I didn't read the news this morning, and wounded up to 300 or more, and of course took uh, what was a beautiful day there, and uh, certain celebratory events, the, the softball game, people simply eating in a restaurant, and uh, well, you know, a death metal concert, and and made those into somewhat of a horror show. And maybe you're also aware that it was recently in Beirut, there was something similar with a bomb. And maybe you also heard about yesterday or the day before in Kenya, where another 147 people were killed uh, by armed gunmen. And then, of course, we can go back through our year and remember that this isn't so for, uh, foreign to us as we've faced various um, mass shootings in our culture, and um, what it all leads people to do, and I, I would think if, if you were seeing this, is, you know, many people go to football games, and football games may not be that safe. Um, many people go out to eat, and now there might be a sense that going out to eat might not be safe. And there's a lot of uh, things in uh, going to church we saw this year, a shooting in a church. Um, we see these in high schools. And what we're finding is more and more is over time is that as terrorists and, and um, uh, mentally uh, disabled individuals shoot up various places or possibly not disabled but just angry and uh, vengeful individuals shoot up places that most parts of our life are becoming where we took for granted safety and where we took for granted kind of a general order um, and a general order of even thought process. You know, typically wars, you do, you fight with armies, not simply going and slaying civilians or uh, random acts of violence um, to cause fear in any population. But anyways, we've taken for granted maybe the peace that we've had for a long time, the peace that our veterans and over the various wars have fought for. And now we see we're not living in the same time as we used to be. We're living in a time where these random acts of violence in, uh, do happen, and not simply to one or two people, but on a mass scale. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me nervous. And it makes me fearful. And when I'm fearful, I start to think in a different way. You know, when you're full of fear, you don't really think rationally. Because fear uh, just psychologically pumps in adrenaline, and adrenaline pumps in the fight or flight or freeze response to get away. And then looking through the lenses of fear, I'm more likely to be protective of myself, to put up boundaries, to seek to preserve myself because there's a threat out there, not just a threat that I can see coming from a mile away, but most certainly a threat I cannot see coming because this threat, this new threat, comes at random times and in places where traditionally you just let people um, live their lives. And so as a culture, as we are threatened with this fear, and, and we, I believe, will continue to be threatened with this, we see this overseas, but it's becoming very apparent that it'll be on our shores and more prevalent in the future, possibly. Hopefully not, but, you know, chances are it will be. And we have an opportunity within this threat. Now, one thing that presents itself is to harden ourselves. That's what suffering and fear does. It hardens us, to protect ourselves, to, um, to kind of bunker down. You know, after the attacks in Paris, it was go to your houses, shut the doors, lock yourself in. And this is the natural response to 
an enemy, to a threat, and to a fear, we go, we hunker down, we lock ourselves in. And we become suspicious of others, less likely to be open to um, working with people who we don't know. In particular, we become actually negative towards strangers, towards people who represent a threat to, or we perceive to represent a threat to us. And this, of course, is actually, interestingly, the opposite of what we're called to in the gospel. But in the same tone, completely natural to fearful people. Now, our Lord tells us to love our enemies. We've heard a sermon on that not too long ago. But he also manifests something called hospitality. And the word for hospitality in Greek is philoxenia. Philoxenia means the love of strangers. The word stranger can also be translated or a synonym of the word stranger is alien, foreigner, unknown person. The opposite of philoxenia is actually somewhat xenophobia, the fear of the stranger, the fear of the foreigner, the alien, the one who is different. In our times, with the pressures and the attacks going on, our temptation is to become more xenophobic. Because the strangers that we see out there do represent sometimes a real threat. And on the other hand, the gospel calls us to a certain love of strangers. Now in today's gospel, we hear, our, uh, we hear the parable of the Good Samaritan. The man who is walking on the way is attacked randomly by thieves and in his half-dead state he has a priest walk by him and cross over on the other side. So we know that the priest saw him because he actually got on the other side to avoid him. He didn't want to be bothered. We see the Levite do the same thing. He saw him and went on the other side and then of course finally the Samaritan and culturally speaking, it's, you know, this story is so well known that everybody knows what a good Samaritan is. A good Samaritan is someone who goes to the wounded and binds up those wounds, who brings them to the inn and who heals him. Now, you saw good Samaritans, I guarantee it, within these terror attacks. One of the little quotes that I read is, whenever there's a tragedy, look for the helpers. And you'll always see amongst the people those who are fleeing and those who are running towards to somehow bandage the wounds, to somehow help those who are in times of trouble. And that, of course, is something that requires is very hard to be that self-transcendent, to look beyond ourselves and saving our own skin to actually caring for the wounded and those around us. But our Lord's example, because our Lord is the prime example of a good Samaritan, is to go to the wounded. And I'll say, and I'll tie this to hospitality only in the sense that at the end he says, who is it who showed love to his neighbor? And of course, it wasn't the priest who avoided the neighbor. It wasn't the Levite. It was precisely the one who bandaged the wound. And this is also a form of hospitality because the Samaritan did not know the man. And so he showed authentic love for the stranger. And this is the challenge that we will face. It's not simply about bandaging wounded. It's about the state of our hearts. It's about our natural response to the threats that we face in life. We must always remember that the gospel calls us to transcend ourselves. It doesn't ask us, if you watch the apostles, Peter, Paul, and all the 12 apostles except for one who died on an island, they did not live their lives by protecting themselves, by sheltering themselves, and by somehow um, being afraid to go out and do the work of God. They went out and they said as if they were slaughtered all day long. They were the offscouring of the earth. They were the people who ran and were shipwrecked and found themselves bit by snakes. It wasn't because they locked themselves in houses. 
It was because they were actually out there, and it was the state of their heart that allowed them to do that. Because in doing the work of God, the work of God is to love the stranger, to love our neighbor. They were not only given courage, but they were actually filled with a sense of the presence of God that allowed them to do that. We have to consider in our time that we may face a time that is very, very uh, negative, where people will be turning on each other. We already see it coming. May God bless us to be attentive to the inner states of our hearts, to remember the gospel message that tells us to be hospitable to strangers. Let us not fall in some sort of fear of strangers or the fear of various people. Because in reality, that fear just clouds our mind. And if we love Christ and if we dedicate our life to Christ, the light of Christ casts out fear. Because we're not concerned with simply preserving ourselves or preserving our way of life. We're interested in pleasing God and loving our neighbor as God has commanded us. This is a hard commandment. But you know, the martyrs who ran to their deaths fulfilled this commandment. They didn't run in fear. They ran towards their death at time. And we may live in an age of martyrs. So may God bless us somehow to internalize the gospel message, to not fall into the so easy of a trap of simply being fearful, afraid, hiding and protecting in doing what it is that inevitably comes upon societies who feel under a threat. 